words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know, some know the beginnings of the story of Jacob, the subject of this morning's Old Testament reading from Genesis. Abraham's son Isaac married Rebecca, and they had a set of twins, Esau and Jacob. Now, even while they were in the womb, they didn't get along. In fact, we're told in chapter 25 that the children struggled within her. And when they were born, Esau came out first, but Jacob was clutching his heel. Esau was a skillful hunter. Jacob was quiet, hung out in the camp. Isaac liked Esau because of the wild game he'd bring home for barbecue while Rebekah loved Jacob. Now, by birthright, Esau was the one who was supposed to receive his father's blessing. He was the one on whom the Lord's promise and blessing were supposed to rest. Now, if you have your Bibles with you, I invite you to turn to Genesis chapter 25 toward the end there. It starts out with, Once when Jacob was cooking stew, Esau came in from the field and he was exhausted. And Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stew, for I am exhausted. There's a parenthesis there. Therefore his name was called Edom, close parenthesis. Jacob said, well, sell me your birthright now. And Esau said, I'm about to die. What use is a birthright to me? And Jacob said, well, swear to me now. And so he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Now on the one hand, Esau didn't take his birthright very seriously. His father Isaac was Abraham's son. And to his grandfather, God had made the promise of a mighty nation that was to come from their house and lineage. Esau foolishly squandered away God's promise for a bowl of soup. But on the other hand, Jacob had battled his brother both in and out of their mother's womb. He wanted what Esau didn't treasure, and he would go on to deceptively acquire his father's blessing, which should have gone to Esau. In fact, turning to Genesis 27, we see an old and feeble Isaac during his last days. His vision was poor, he simply couldn't see. And he knew his days were coming close to their end. And so he asked Esau to go out hunting for him so he could have one last barbecue before he then blessed his son and died. Rebecca overheard him. And when Esau went out to hunt, she dressed Jacob up like his brother, had him pretend to be his brother. Isaac was thus fooled into giving Jacob the blessing intended for Esau saying, May God give you the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. Let peoples serve you and nations bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers and may your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you and blessed be everyone who blesses you. And then Esau returned, only to discover his brother's theft of the blessing which, of course, remember, he had sold to him for a cup of soup, but he forgot. And so he decides that he's going to kill Jacob once their father dies. Now, once again, Rebekah intercedes, sending Jacob to Isaac, whom she had already convinced to send him off to her brother Laban in Haran, purportedly to find an acceptable wife, but also purposefully to save him from his brother's wrath. And Isaac sends Jacob off with yet another blessing, saying, God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you that you may become a company of peoples. May he give the blessing of Abraham to you and to your offspring with you that you may take possession of the lands of your sojournings that God gave to Abraham. And that takes us up then to today's text in Genesis 28. 
Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he came to a certain place and he stayed there that night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of that place, he put it under his head and he lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed. Behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south. And in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you. And I will keep you wherever you go and bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. And then Jacob woke from his sleep and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God and this is the gate of heaven. Jacob was on his own traveling from the only home he'd ever known, away from his parents and his brother with whom he had spent his entire life. Now, he may have been glad to get away from his brother, especially since he intended to kill him, but he missed his mother and father. And he's heading to an uncle he probably didn't know, may have never even met, traveling to a land far away, not his own, Yes, he had gotten his brother's birthright and earned his brother's wrath, but now he's sojourning on his own. And, depart, and despite his father's parting words of blessings, he wasn't feeling particularly blessed right now. So he traveled as far as he could before the sun had gone down. Now he could go no farther. In fact, Jacob didn't even know where he was. There was no Motel 6 or Holiday Express and so he pulled up a rock, laid down his head, and went to sleep. And that's when God came to him. Now, if you read Jacob's story up to this point, you'll notice that nowhere is it recorded that he had ever personally encountered God. He may have heard about him from his father, though there's not even an indication of that. Now, he knew about this birthright that was being handed down from Grandpa Abraham to his father, and of course, which he had just now stolen from Esau. But that's all we're told. There is no picture of Jacob being intimate with his God. That's about to change, however. God comes to Jacob in a dream and makes himself known to him. Now, first, Jacob sees this ladder that's extending from earth to heaven. Now people often refer to this as Jacob's ladder. But if you pay attention, he had nothing to do with it. He just sees the thing in his dream. And on it he saw these angels going up and coming down with the Lord God at the top of the ladder. This ladder and the angels ascending and descending show us that God was still connected to both the earth and to the people who lived on it. Two Old Testament scholars, Kyle and Delich, note, the angels upon it carry up the wants of men to God and bring down the assistance and protection of God to men. There was no better place for Jacob to be. This ladder stood there upon the earth, just where Jacob was lying in solitude, poor, helpless, and forsaken by men. Now at the top of the ladder was the Lord, and he had his eye on Jacob, and he spoke to Jacob as the God of his fathers, the God who had blessed Abraham with the promise of his fellowship, and who had passed on the same promise to Isaac, who had passed it now on to Jacob. And God confirms to Jacob everything that his father had promised, 
But he also promises his faithful protection. And he also promises that he would return home. God spoke to Jacob not as the scoundrel who had absconded with a birthright that wasn't his, but as a father who chose to love him and provide for him and to protect him through all the adventures that were yet to come. God was taking Jacob the scoundrel and making him Jacob the patriarch. For in him shall all the families of earth be blessed. And Jacob's response to this, well, surely the Lord's in this place and I did not know it. And yet, while he may have known something about God, as we kind of discussed earlier, there's still no indication he actually knew God or had any semblance of a relationship with the Lord until now. For God, in his mercy, came to Jacob with a promise and a hope. God was with him. And God was going to stick with him. And God was eventually going to bring him back to this place and this home that he loved. So as Jacob was leaving the land, he would carry with him this sacred awe of the gracious presence of the Lord. How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. And while the assigned text stops here, we really need to finish the story. So I invite you to pick up with me at verse 18. So early in the morning, Jacob took the stone that he put under his head and he set it up as a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of the city was Luz at first. And then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone that I set up for a pillar shall be God's house. And all of all that you give me, I will give the full tenth to you. And God did. And so Jacob kept his vow. Keep in mind, in the Hebrew, the word Bethel, actually means the house of God. And that place eventually became a temple to God. Many generations later, when the tent of meeting and the Ark of the Covenant were placed there, following the exodus from Egypt and the conquering of the promised land. Many years later, all this would be moved to Jerusalem by King David. So what do we see in all of this? Nice story. What does it mean? God can and he chooses to work in, with, and among sinful people. Jacob was a scoundrel, taking his brother's birthright by deception, even if that idiot had earlier sold it to him for a bowl of soup. And yet God in his grace takes him and uses him to accomplish his holy will. Like the paralytic of today's gospel reading, who needed healing. What does Jesus first do? pronounce mercy before telling him to rise, pick up your bed, and go home. Just as God did not desert nor forget Jacob, but remained steadfast in his love and providence, that same God says to you and to me, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Just as God chose Jacob, loved him, used him, to be a blessing. So God has chosen us and loves us and blesses us so that we also can bless others in his name. And upon this we can and we should depend through Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior. And all God's people said, Amen. Would you